Welcome to the seventh edition of the 2019 Friday Football Fever. Wow, crazy stuff. Some teams <laughs> only have three regular, se th regular season games left, so time flies when you're definitely having some fun out there. How's your energy, Southern Arizona? Good evening to you. I'm Paul C. Collet. And I'm David Kelly. And on one of those teams with seven games in the books, including Saguaro High School, the Cougars were hoping to stay unbeaten tonight against mighty South Point Catholic. That's right. Led by a number of college prospects and Southern Arizona's all-time leading rusher, Bajon Robinson. The Lancers were also hoping to stay undefeated, David. That's right, Paul. But don't count out Saguaro's vaunted rushing attack as well. It was our Miranda Pumpkin Patch Game of the Week. Trying to stay unbeaten. How about Jackson Bowling getting the start once again? And Ed Ackerley in the house. He is the T-Boon picking of Saguaro football. Stop stealing that man's mayoral signs. Please. Early in the ball game, B. John Robinson needed just 85 yards to become the all-time big school leading rusher. He got 45 on that run right there. Added two more yards for a second touchdown of the game right here. And Dijon and South Point up 14-0 early. Bring out the pink there. Breast Cancer Awareness Month is October. Saguaro putting the ball in the air. How about Devin Robertson, Dimitri Veralis? That's 33 yards. Got the Cougars rolling to the red zone. And then, as we saw last week, and Arizona did a lot of that. The shuttle sweep there. Jordan Button getting it into the score. He fumbled, but it still counts. 14-7 at that point. Now, we might have a game. Bowling going to try to make a statement that he should stay the starter. Getting the ball to Dave Han Chang in space. 40 yards for the DHC. <laughs> Pretty nice. But the fella that they came to see, number five, Bijan Robinson. And here is the run where he steps into history. 37 yards to the doorstep. Almost a touchdown, but no, says the referee. He passes Thomas's Mark Thomas to become the best ever to run the ball at a conference for a school or higher. Congrats to Bijan. South Point Catholic wins their ninth in a row over Saguaro. Congrats to Bijan. All right, moving on to Sunnyside where the Blue Devil cheerleaders are sporting pink for cancer awareness. And before the game, parents walked out with pictures of loved ones lost to cancer. Here comes former Arizona football standout Chris Corral right there in the gray who would honor his family members, Nina Hickman and Monica Bailey. As for the game itself, on the first offensive play of the game for Sunnyside, quarterback Dion Conde will hit Jose Acosta then. Get out of my way, coach, can't see. Once it comes into view, Jose Acosta is gone down the sidelines. Just like that, Sunnyside leads 7-0 against Cienega. But back comes the Bobcats. Gabe Levy will take the handoff from Ryan Swoger. And Swoger's got some swag coming right at you. When everything's said and done, that's a first down deep into Sunnyside territory. And a couple of plays later, it looks like a broken play. But Ryan Swoger says, I guess I'll just take it myself. He will hustle his way into the end zone to tie the game 1-1. Pat in the chest. Oh, yeah, in the end, Sienega walks off the field with a victory. Final score, 26-14. Can you tie a game 1-1? Everyone knew it was game time over at Catalina Foothills when the fireworks going off. Homecoming. Canyon Del Oro, though, started this game off pretty strong. Stevie Rocker, he's back. Taking the handoff, breaking one tackle, breaking another. Finishing it off with the spin out of bounds. Gets the first down. And then Gavin Davis gets the glory right up the middle. And that's the first score of the game as the Dorados were up at that point by a score of seven to nothing. Gavin Davis far from done, taking another handoff. Sliding right off the first and goal into the end zone. Make it two for Gavin. He's not going to have it a heck of a season. 14 zip at that point. Catalina Foothills trying to retaliate. Will Parker looking for an open receiver. Goes straight ahead up the middle. Gets the Catalina first down, first touchdown, I should say, of the game. And we'll show you that final if we have it. Actually, we don't have a final. So call in and let us know. We'll try to get it to you before this game, before the show is over. Hey, from the foothills to the west side we go as Flowing Wells is hoping to notch its first victory of the season. The Caballeros would host Empire High School. The boys from Vail came into the matchup with only one victory. So obviously, both teams took the field with something to prove. And gotta love the passionate crowd at Flowing Wells, always there for the Caballeros through thick and thin. We'd arrive just after an Empire score and on the ensuing kickoff, Flowing Wells, Giovanni A. Walls is no Nestle quick. But he is Speedy Gonzalez. Andale, 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 andale. He will take it all the way to the house, but sadly it'll be called back because of a penalty. Tough break for Flowing Wells. Still later, the Caballeros would D it up and force Empire to punt. Then on the punt, it is a 
fate. Psych! Cody Pacheco will run his way down the sidelines for the first down. Cody Pacheco forced out of bounds and the Ravens would take a 7-0 lead into the halftime locker room. Last update, it was 10-7. Flowing well, still looking for that final score. And from the west side, we now turn our way back to the Catalina Foothills and the edge of Sabino Canyon. Let's send things over to David Kelly and the Sabercats hosted Catalina. I like that, Cody Pacheco. We might have to start calling him the fight doctor. It's been a big rebuilding year for Catalina High School as the Trojans came into this matchup tonight, winless at 0-5. Meanwhile, Sabino looking to take out their frustration on the Trojans after losing a close game to 3A power. Ben Franklin and this evening over at Sabino High School, the grill wasn't the only thing bringing the heat. Man, that looks real good. We start off first quarter, second down and 10. Long bomb, Diego Armijo midair, putting the ball at the 45 yard line. First down and goal to go. And then it's gonna be Aaron Mucklebus. He's able to run it in, putting Sabino up at that point, 19 to nothing. Still first quarter, third down, 11. Catalina has the ball, almost intercepted, but caught here and ran by Jacob Thomas. Doesn't quite get in. Later, Sabino's Alex Lopez gonna take it to the dance floor like a stag prom goer. Lopez wasn't done, got the straight crib carry there to the touchdown. Sabino up good at this point, and they go on to win big tonight. 61 final. Hey, mixed feelings for Sabino High School Athletic Director Shane Folsom, who was the AD at Catalina High School just a couple of years ago. All right, moving on, a congrats is in order to longtime Douglas Dispatch Editor Bruce Wetton at this evening's Douglas Homecoming matchup against Pueblo High School. He'd be honored by the hometown crowd. Wetton was selected this year's Douglas High School Homecoming dedicatee. Wetton was also honored at Thursday's Homecoming Parade. Unfortunately, though, Douglas lost tonight to Pueblo in Cochise County. All right, on to Troy and Mountain View with the Lions coming out strong and right off the bat, Aaron Logsdon for Mountain View is coming through. Thought you knew! Just like that, the boys from the Northwest side take a 7-0 lead and after that, Mountain View with the ball again. And how about Hayden Parson? He's about to get the ball to Collins Opukapu Apwa. 50 yards later, that's a touchdown. The route is on and Aaron Logsdon is about to say, heck, give me the ball again, my man. This is the icing on the cake. Mountain View wins big. Final score, 56 to zip. Hey, with the victory, Coach Matt Johnson and the Mountain Lions now move to two and four and gear up for a trip to Vail next week to take on Empire High School. Hey, we're far from over with my friends. After the break, we'll have more on the dynamic duo running back for Desert View as the Jaguars knocked off Rincon in a close one. Plus, Ampi and Palo Verde go toe to toe and you don't want to miss the Friday Football Fever play of the night. Nat and Moore, next. Hey, welcome back to the Friday Football Fever. How's your energy, my high school football fans? I'm Paul C. Kala. David Kelly is standing by. But first, quick reminder, you can see all of the scores for all the big games on our ticker right below. We'll have the full rundowns on KVOA.com. But for now, let's get right back into it, shall we? It was a rare Thursday night showdown between Desert View and rink on high. Let's get back there again. Let's head on out to Midtown where the Rangers came in storming right at you. Coach Mike Strack and his boys were hoping to win for the fourth time in six games, but right off the bat, it'll be Desert View striking first. Check out Serge Bowie taking it to the house. Serge Bowie, I way. That's because the TD will be called back because of a penalty. So let's get it to him once again. This time, Bowie will. Carry the ball all the way to the goal line, and that'll set up a TD to put the Jaguars up early. And on the ensuing kickoff, how about Steven Geiger? Making it happen, Captain. Gotta love the nice run back until finally he's gonna be thrown out of bounds. But in the end, Desert View hung on for 27-26 victory. Serge Boe and Carlos Alvarez combined for 322 yards rushing on the night. From Midtown, we head south of it to 22nd Street, where Palo Verde was hosting Amphi. Let's bring on Dave Kelly once again back in the mix. After being blown out by district rival Canyon Del Oro, Amphi High School looking for a little redemption this week on the road against the Titans. Meanwhile, Palo Verde much improved from last season, still trying to get back to 500 to win tonight. We put the Titans at 3-3, three and three, and we've got twins. I sometimes feel like falling on a pylon. Julian Encinas, our former Roadrunners Player of the Week in the house tonight, but the Titans' Denier Nelson stole the show. He's laying out, and I'm not talking about to get a tan. He's laying out to get takeaways. 
26-21, Palo Verde at the half. Second half, Dario Merchica going uptown. How about that? I like that too. How about that? <laughs> Love those uh, drum majors. Dario Merchica going uptown. Demir Nelson with the snazzy catch going downtown. Got a little okie doke in his move right there. 75 yards to the house. Demir Nelson is Friday night lit tonight. Panthers no answer right back. Kelvin, Kevin Silva to Julian Campos. But in the end, how about Palo Verde getting their third win of the season by three at home? What a win. All right, now let's get to the Friday Football Fever play of the week. For that, we head out to Sabino High School once again and check out quarterback Mario Burreal unload for Catalina High School. The ball will be tipped by Sabino's Corbin Muckle Bust and Jacob Thomas says, hey, I got it, I got it. He is off to the races, but check out Ethan Alegria taking him down from behind. That was just before the end zone to help Sabino secure that big victory in the shutout. That is our play of the night. Speaking of the night, it's the end of the night, unfortunately. It's the time of the night that we don't look forward to. Time to say goodbye, but hey, if you want to watch the show over and over and over again, you can see it all <laughs> on KVOA.com. And don't forget, for updates on the sports like college football, the Wildcats as they prep for Colorado, you can also hit up our website. Glenn Howe and I are going to have our game preview for you early in the morning over at KVOA.com. Looking forward to that, of course. For David Kelly, I'm Paul Cicala telling everybody, have a positive, productive weekend filled with lots of joy. And don't forget to enjoy our montage of more high school highlights and, of course, the fans. Oh,